last time I was here and spoke to you, I had been to my friend's engagement party and I talked about how I would experience payback from that, which I did. It wasn't as bad as I thought it would be, so that was really good. I did have to rest on Sunday and Monday all day, but I was able to move from my bed to the couch and watch some TV with my housemates. So that was a lot better than I thought it could be, especially the Sunday. I have, though, throughout the week, generally been feeling worse than normal. And I think in part that is to do with having gone to the engagement party. So that hasn't been the greatest. But I'm still grateful that it wasn't worse or hasn't been worse than what it was, even though I've been quite sick anyway. Enough of that. I thought I'd tell you a bit about my week. I've had a pretty big week this week with medical appointments and such things. So I'll just check my diary to make sure I give you the right information. But, so as I said, Sunday and Monday I just rested. Tuesday I would have loved to stay home and rest, but I had an appointment um, at the Royal Melbourne Hospital in the Genetics Clinic. So I headed in there for a 2.30 appointment and that was just because last time I was there, about three years ago, I wasn't able to get a clear diagnosis. So the doctor who saw me told me that I had a genetic connective tissue disorder and it was very similar to Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome type 3 or hypermobility type, but that he couldn't exactly diagnose me with that, that it was, for some reason, there was some question of whether I had Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome type 3 or not. And the letter he provided to me and my doctor certainly wasn't conclusive in terms of the diagnosis. So three years later, I went back to try and get a more definitive diagnosis, which thankfully I was able to get. The doctor I saw this time was able to confirm that I do have Ehlers-Danlos type 3 and is sending out a letter saying that to myself and my doctor. So now I have, just so it doesn't change anything in terms of treatment. There isn't really any treatment as such. I see a great physio who specialises in connective tissue disorders and certainly it has an impact on my treatment and on surgeries and on my everyday life. But the main thing really is that it just gives me a definitive diagnosis, which it's just really nice for me to have instead of sitting in that grey of not really knowing, well, do I have this, don't I, you know, what, where do I sit? Because now I have a definitive diagnosis, which is really nice. So that happened on Tuesday. And then on Wednesday, it's methotrexate day, so I took, I took my methotrexate. And I also in the afternoon went and saw my GP. And we spoke about a few things, including my lack of sleep recently and my blood test results. You might remember a couple of videos ago I showed you that or talked about getting um, my regular blood test results because I'm on methotrexate. They all came back fine um, and no problem with the methotrexate affecting my organs, which is really good and that's what I thought it would show. So yay. We talked about a few other things. I'm having some really weird issues with my sinuses at night time. And um, we also spoke about my wrist surgery coming up next week. But that's, yeah, there's not too much to talk about there, really. Thursday, I was really unwell. I had, I've, since I've been on the methotrexate, certainly on the full dose, I've had a number of weeks which I've been really, really unwell on the Thursday and a couple of weeks which weren't so bad. This week, unfortunately, was one of the really bad weeks. I did, however, choose to go out with a friend on Thursday, kind of late morning. So she picked me up at 11 a.m. and we went to a cafe just down the street. And that was really lovely and I really wanted to spend time with her. So I'm very glad that I did that because it was good. However, the whole time I was nauseated and wanting to throw up and I was physically shaking from fatigue and exhaustion. So it wasn't easy on me physically. And the rest of the day I did spend, well, pretty much the whole rest of the day in bed, apart from a couple of hours that I spent laying on the couch. But I did need to be in bed 
for the most part because it's a lot more comfortable. Apart from anything else, there's less stimuli in my room by myself and also because I have my electric blanket which does help, the heat helps with my pain and along with the fatigue, the extreme fatigue and the quite severe nausea, I also was experiencing and have experienced from the methotrexate a high level of, of pain as well which is quite unusual, it's not a normal side effect but that's something that has just for some reason affected me. So that was Thursday. And Friday I had an appointment with my rheumatologist in the afternoon. This one's a bit more interesting. So we talked about a few different things. We talked about the fact that my hips are actually still getting more painful. My hands are still extremely painful, especially at night and in the morning. And so the methotrexate, although it has helped to a degree to this point, it's certainly not fixing the problem. I still have a lot of inflammation and pain. So we spoke about that and we decided, and I also spoke about the side effects that I've been experiencing. So it was decided that I would stay on the methotrexate tablets, but I would change the way I take them slightly, as, as well as the folic acid I take alongside it on the six other days a week. And try that for another three weeks and just see how I go with both the side effects and in terms of my pain levels and seeing if it's actually working any better and if I'm still getting the really bad side effects doesn't seem to be or it doesn't seem to be working I am to move on to an injected form of methotrexate which I really don't mind I'm used to giving myself injections so if that works better then I'm more than happy to move to that so that's that's the first thing that we talked about we also spoke about the wrist surgery. So I have the arthroscopy coming up this Thursday, which is to check what exactly is going on in my left wrist um, in terms of the cartilage mostly, to make sure I've got enough cartilage so that I can have a wrist reconstruction to fix this wrist. My rheumatologist is very concerned that if I was to have the wrist reconstruction, my body would then attack the joint once I'd had the surgery just like it did with my hip after I had my hip surgery earlier in the year and that it would then make things worse. Adding to this is the fact that my surgeon requested that I don't take methotrexate for a period of two to three months while I'm recovering from surgery in order for because the methotrexate can actually hinder the healing process problem is at the same time, if I'm not taking the methotrexate to help the inflammation, the inflammation most definitely can hinder the healing process and cause more damage. So this is the problem uh, that we've kind of got in that respect at the moment. So my rheumatologist needs to speak with my surgeon and work that out if I am to have the surgery. He also requested that if my surgeon on Thursday finds inflammation, otherwise known as synovitis, in my joint, that he actually takes a biopsy of that, which can be tested for rheumatoid arthritis. My rheumatologist suspects that, as well as the lupus, I also have seronegative rheumatoid arthritis. So hopefully that's going to happen. And if there is inflammation found, he also said that I'll need to come back and see him sooner, or like in the next few weeks, if I can get in. And he's likely to put me straight on to the injected methotrexate and at a higher dose because if it's also in my wrists, there's my hips and my fingers and likely other joints as well, they will need to start attacking it a little bit more aggressively again. So that's happening. One concerning thing that came up was that my rheumatologist mentioned that if I do have the wrist reconstruction surgery, I'm going to be quite incapacitated for a couple of months afterwards. They'll be taking bone out of my iliac crest, which is basically my hip, and as well as obviously I won't be able to use my left arm at all. So I would have my right arm, but I won't, you know, I'll have a lot of pain, I will not be able to walk uh, for a few weeks, and also not be able to use my left hand. And because I don't have any family around to look after me, 
that creates a bit of a conundrum because if I can't look after myself with just my right arm, then they may be said, or they would, need to put me into a nursing home for about six weeks, which I am at, not at all loving the idea of. So I'm going to be talking to my GP about what services I can get. I'll be working through um, ways I can deal with things like, can I make some meals in advance and put them in the freezer and possibly have some other ones delivered that fit my food intolerances, um, that sort of thing, so that I can cope without being put into a nursing home, which is obviously not what I want at all, would not be my choice. <laughs> so that's happening. Now, none of that, we don't know if my risk reconstruction is happening yet until Thursday. So hopefully on Thursday after the surgery, my surgeon will come and speak to me and will tell me what he found, if there is inflammation, how much, how much cartilage I have left, if I can have the surgery. And certainly if he believes there's a chance I can have the surgery, then there's other things that need to be discussed with my rheumatologist in terms of the risks. And, and then if I am to have it, how? How are we going to cope? How am I going to cope afterwards? Because I need to think about there. So yeah, that's, that's pretty much my wrap up. It's Sunday today. Yesterday I was supposed to have a, yesterday I was supposed to have a friend come over for a cuppa, but I cancelled that because I really wasn't up to it. Today is a rest day. I do need to fill up my pillbox with my new, with my meds for the week. So that'll happen. But other than that, I'll be resting. And then tomorrow I can rest. And then I've got another big week coming up on Tuesday. I'm doing about six hours of work as a simulated patient for medical exams. I do this once or twice a year just to get me some more money to help pay for my meds. It usually takes me about a week to recover from. It's extremely exhausting, which is why I only do it once or twice a year. It's also a bit of fun, but it is takes a huge toll on my body. Unfortunately, this time I won't have that time to recover. I am seeing my myotherapist the next day, so hopefully she'll be able to help with some of my pain and help calm my nervous system down a bit. Then the following day, I have my wrist arthroscopy. It's not ideal, and I could have cancelled working as a sim patient on the Tuesday, but I actually need the money from that in order to pay for the wrist arthroscopy. So it's not ideal at all, but I'll just have to see how I go. And I'll update you after that. So thanks for listening. Bye.